Thanks for sticking with us. We're about to get ready for picks and bans for game number two between the University of Toronto, Mississauga, and St. Clair College. Saints had themselves a tough one, but they kept it respectable. But you, Toronto, Mississauga, ended up shutting things down. And we can see we're already like midway through this pick and ban phase. We already have the instantly banned Kaisa. So they're going to try and shut down Lazi. And then the Gragas, you were mentioning, uh, Matt, you mentioned that they're probably going to take away the Gragas. Sure enough, it's going to be the case, and they leave Camille up instead. Now he's in regards to picks. Ezreal once again here for forever. The Ono's actually getting picked up by Explosion. And then, of course, the Pantheon, probably going to be from Mianzfo. Um Now a Vayne. So what are we looking at here? I'm liking the Vayne pick, because they already picked the Ezreal, and I would say it's a pretty good pick into it. Um, especially with the Pantheon that could go support with it. Um, the only downside is that into a Leona, it's not the best lane, not the fun, not a fun lane, but, you know, it's definitely a, a, a surprise pick, I would say, the most. Unless this isn't a support Pantheon. <laughs> huh. Yeah, it's going to be Mianswo going back onto the Braum and Toronto Saga picking up the Camille that was banned last game. And so Cooper had himself a bit of a hard time there up against Red Eclipse in game number one. Of course, there's Gragas this time, but Camille, a bit of a lane bully herself. So Kubra, if not careful, could be in a position very similar if uh, Marcelesny is right there to uh, give his lane a little love, to say the least. Yeah, it's going to be surprising an Ivern ban coming in for the side of Toronto Saga. He's definitely been popping up, but... Um... I don't see Active Force being the Ivern player that most would uh, have. Followed by Galio and a Seraphine. Seraphine actually um, coming up more often due to the uh, Moonstone meta that's been showing up, but uh, nobody's wanting to take their pick at it. Sticking in, and they're going to finish the ban phase off with a Yon, not allowing Brian to get back onto that prominent mid lane pick against Frez. Okay, so they basically shut down, at least took away the champions. They didn't shut them down, but they took away the champions that were the major problems in that last game, because of course it was the top lane kind of ran away, the mid lane really ran away, unfortunately, there. And this I haven't seen in a while. Hello, Evelyn. Yeah, the Evelyn pick is actually a surprising one. You don't see Evelyn coming up that often in this looking like they want to go for that pick out comp uh, for the side of Toronto Mississauga, picking a Camille and Leona. They want to try and get around that map and play that fighting style uh, in team fights. I'm wondering what they want to pick for the jungle. It's going to be the Kane into the Evelyn. And looking for that final pick of mid lane, unless they send the Pantheon mid. Yeah, this... Both teams have me confused in regards to team compositions right now, because right now, uh, Utron Mississauga doesn't have really anything in regards to tank. Okay, you got Frez back on the bird, so this is at least a comfortable pick. But now, what are we looking at in regards to uh, uh, Toronto Mississauga? Yeah, they're really making uh, Brian here dig into his hat to see what else he can pull out to uh, counter the Anivia, saying... You, we took your Yona, what else do you got here? And they're going to go with the Twisted Fate for that mid lane. Evening okay. out. Okay. I have gonna never... Be... Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, it's going to be the Pantheon top lane, which is uh, pretty... I would say it's an even matchup almost into the Camille. <laughs> this team composition has me excited because the way that I'm going to explain this composition, at least from what I see as the... Like the caster, this the outsider looking in here. It's going to sound kind of funny because I'm going to be referencing Eve online. Basically, this uh, this composition that I'm seeing here from the University of Toronto Mississauga. Who cares how tanky you are if you can just outrun everything, outmaneuver, and just dodge like crazy? Like nobody except Leona really gets that tanky on this squad. And even then, Leona main tank feels kind of odd to me. Meanwhile, like. Uh, St. Clair, it's a different composition, definitely different from what we've seen in the past from him. We can see Lazzy's vein, we can see Cooper on a Pantheon, but I'm just so interested. So we throw this to us for a second at this uh, high mobility 
lack of tank, huge pick composition that we're going mm-hmm. to see here from uh, from U- Utron with Sasaga. I feel like the execution that they're going to have to pull off has to be top notch. Otherwise, they're just going to get clapped. Yeah, it's definitely they're throwing a lot of their uh, their picks into that Leona and possibly Camille being a little bit tanky, but the side of St. Clair, they're uh, they're looking like they were ready for this. They came in with a Brahmin of Pantheon who are, can be pretty tanky with Pantheon being able to take no damage with his shield and actually being two shields that take basically no damage. So all that damage they're going to throw out from the Ezreal and stuff is just going to get negated. And I mean, I don't care how fast you are too. If you have a click and point stun, like I believe Pantheon does, um, you're, you can blink away. It's still going to chase you and stun you. And it could very well be a pick against you. But this Evelyn, I feel like, is going to be such an interesting nuisance here from uh, Marcel Lesney here. As uh, definitely I don't pick. see it too often. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely something I was not expecting coming in from uh, Marcel. Uh, it's one of the one of the more hidden picks, I guess they we have. They must have been practicing. Uh, definitely not one of the more bigger uh junglers that are currently in the meta you definitely see someone like uh they could have went the udir again or even alilia uh over mm-hmm. the evelyn but yeah there was clearly have some faith in him there was so much meta stuff available and they just opted to completely throw that out the window which personally i love but we'll have to see as we go along here and to be honest university of toronto mississauga they have a game to play with if they want to try mm-hmm. something, I mean, you very well could. I mean, I don't like the thought of uh, like feeling overconfident and playing with your food. But if you want to try out a different composition in competitive and you have yourself an extra game to do so, give it a shot, I suppose. If they mm-hmm. want to try to make this high execution uh, pick composition work, give it a shot. I definitely like how uh, basically Evelyn and Twist of Fate could just appear absolutely out of nowhere. And just completely blow somebody up. It's gonna be nasty. Yeah. It's definitely gonna be a bloody game again. I would say it's um looking like the comps are um pretty pretty even. Uh, I would I would give the edge to St. Clair, honestly, with the the extended tankiness they have and engage. You have the Pantheon ulti into the uh they can counter the TF ulti coming in. But Definitely going to be a, a game we can look forward to and see who can come out on top. It feels like another situation where if St. Clair can just survive long enough, not get picked on too badly, they'll be A-OK going into the late game. I mean, who better have than like something like a Vayne for late game play? Anivia late game is beautiful. Like Pantheon mm-hmm. feels like he, he's not necessarily a late game character from what I understand, but he's still going to be the solid tank line you need. And yeah. with Ansfo's Brahm and uh, Active Forces Kane, like just survive these first twenty minutes without completely bleeding out, and I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, they definitely don't want to draw this game out into a 30, 40 minute game like last game. But you want to get this Pantheon ahead, and especially this Vein ahead. And as we load onto the Rift, it's going to be a uh, Looking like another five point from each other. No one's wanting to throw that contesting out there and do an invade. Unless St. Clair is actually looking. No, they're just, they're just looking for that deep ward again. Yeah, see if they can get themselves some uh, some free gold, free experience. But not this time. You can see they actually adjusted where they place it this time. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. Uh, Frez did actually take the cleanse this time against that TF. So she doesn't get the um, gold card into death from Evelyn. Um, and another thing to know that the TF did take TP, but he does have Unsealed Spellbook on the side. But it's going to be um, definitely a bloodbath of a game if uh, things get scrappy early. That's going to be looking like an actual invade of... Both sides potentially. Manso is gonna spot out the invade. Not much he can do about it though. And it's gonna be trade for reds. And they were going over to the side of Trimus Saga. 
Camille, interestingly, is not actually going back to lane. She's waiting for his Pantheon to roam up. Uh-oh. But he's now going back. It must have yeah, it must have been that bait of a leash there he was waiting for, but didn't want to stick around for the engage. It would have been funny to get the jump onto Cooper like that, but not this time. Like you are saying, just going to trade the red buffs over. And now we already have a quick stun here. Lousy also picking up the cleanse here in this game. So just does not want to get picked out by any sort of gold card, any sort of Leona stun. Keeping himself alive at least one time. But there is definitely a lot, or not necessarily a ton, but a decent amount of critical crowd control that Lassie has to be careful of on that vein. Yeah, and one thing to note, actually, the Evelyn skipped over the Gromp clear, so Active Force is going to have the XP and camp lead over her, uh, taking his entire, Marcel's entire blue or red jungle. He's going to go for a small loot gank here, forcing the flash out of Brian. All right. And he's going to go back to his bot side and for that uh, go crowd spawning in 10, 15 seconds. You can tell that this is a matchup now that Frez just feels so much more comfortable in. I feel like going up against a Twisted Fate is just extremely common nowadays. Just the global oftentimes is just too good to pass up on. So, just a little bit more normal. He's able to farm it out. He was even harassing down uh, Brian at least a little bit here. As the Wet Noodle fight up here in the top lane just keeps on going. Cooper actually getting the best of it, at least as of right now. He's got to be careful. Evelyn is on the same side as him, but actually, he might be running into yeah. both Frez and Active Force. It's going to be a stun hitting. It's going to be another flash burn. Active Force burning two flashes within the last minute, which is huge for uh, the side of St. Clair. Get rid of some of the defense. Get rid of some of the aggression possibilities with that flash. No over aggressive plays from uh, Marcelesny's. Uh, Evelyn, in this case, going to be going back down towards bot side of things. Take the crap instead. Active Force's Kane may be looking to make a play up on the top side. Going to opt for Krugs instead. But once again, mid lane is back and forth here. And it seems like, as of right now, Frizz is getting the better of these. Yeah, it's actually a good thing to know is that they spotted the Kane up top lane. So the Evelyn knows that he's not here. Oh. They could look. It's going to be first blood, actually, just on Brian. Frez coming in huge with that. All I'm right. Using that first blood for uh, no flash. Just somehow, like, just enough damage. Maybe just... Maybe not respecting the amount of early burst damage that... Uh, the Frez can dish out on that Anivia. It is kind of surprising at times. You think maybe you timed out the Frost so you don't get the bonus damage on that Icicle. And then all of a sudden a quarter of your health is gone. And it really bit Brian this time by. Gonna have to use his teleport to get back to lane. Granted, he's really close to level 6. So he's gonna have that Destiny that uh, pretty much map-wide teleport available to him sometime soon. And where do you take the trip first? If you're Brian in this case. Well, honestly, there's not much you can really do as this TF right now because you have your bot lane shoved in unless you're wanting to dive, or you have the top lane not being shoved in by uh, Red Eclipse. So that, if you're, you're feeling pretty bad as this TF right now after losing that first blood, and definitely feeling pretty good for um, Frez here in that lane. I'm very surprised to see the solo kill go over there to Frez, but making that Anivia work. And now they both hit six at the same time. This is Ooh. going to hurt a little bit. Nice little quarter HP chunk. Not going to maybe do yeah. it again. Frez definitely feeling himself this game against this TF. He's, he's definitely uh, played this matchup a lot. Knows how to uh, counter this TF. He's finding his opportunities to go in. He's getting the little burst damage and then running back before Brian could really fire anything back at him. So, so far, so good. He's not necessarily doing the, the strongest in regards to CS in that mid lane, but at least he has the kill to kind of maybe make up for it. Yeah, and this bot lane slowly shoving in for this dragon potentially next minute. Um, Kane looking topside. He does have an XP lead over the Evelyn. He's gonna face tank him, but he wins these trades. Evelyn does not have flash. 
Oh, it's actually may just be Uber 3 going down. TF Ulti coming in on top of Active Forest. And it just may go down. Oh, burning away, away, but not enough. Barely. Kubra and Actifor is going to get out with just enough HP to keep himself in the game. But a critical ultimate burned in regards to the Destiny. Uh, Morselesny didn't exactly get the best trade either. Going to be forced to back. And now, in theory, everybody could just reset, go for Dragon. And sure, Actifor is going to be down a flash. But other than that, that's basically it. In the long run, uh, St. Clair does come out on top of that because they did not burn Pantheon's flash at all. They burned... Only the TF ulti and Kane flash, but as a Kane, you, you're feeling pretty good that TF misses Q. Doesn't hit the wild cards. Absolutely, okay. and we do see the Saints pinging over that dragon. We do see, I believe, that is Mansfo already there. They might be, in fact, starting this thing. Yeah, and they, they have no vision. All they have is that scuttle, uh, but nobody's walking over it. So this is just going to be a free, uncontested drag for the side of St. Clair. And it's going to be a f Infernal. A cute little move. I like to see it. Quick Dragon in the pocket now of St. Clair. Giving them the tiniest of leads here in this game. Of course, still very early. So 300, still nothing to get worried out about in the slightest. But we take those leads when we have them. And it's looking like it's going to be that Red Cane coming in. Both... Pantheon and uh, Kane building that Gore Drinker component. So they're definitely a little unlucky for Frez catching him on the other side of the wall there. May have actually been a flash burn there if he gets caught. And it's going to be dead even game in gold. The advantage going to St. Clair. Good. Tons of damage going in Brian. He doesn't have the mana to follow up on it. And now it's gotten to the point where Fresh can actually keep up on CS as well. And actually, Kubra, Ooh. from losing the trades earlier, now has enough to just tank through the, the initial burst and actually win back that fight, forcing uh, Red Eclipse down to half of his HP. And he can do that again, but this is going to be messy. Here comes the Evelyn. Marcelesny going to get the charm off, and good night, Kubra. Red Eclipse going to get the credit for that one. Yeah, and that's going to be actually two flashes burned for one. That's yeah, a bit greedy for Red Eclipse to flash for that finishing on it. Uh, wanting that kill for himself there, but overall, a good gank from Marcel. Yeah, secured it nonetheless. Kubra does have the teleport available, but he's not going to opt to use it. Just going to walk to mid lane, actually clean up the minions as Frez went up top to clean up the minions there, so. Sure, the kill went underway, but at least farm-wise, St. Clair are actually in this game. There is no big discrepancies in regards to farm, and if anything, Saints, for the most part, are in the lead, but not by much. So neck and neck here with this crazy Masters, Grandmasters, and I think one challenger squad of uh, University of Toronto, Mississauga. That's what we like to see. Yeah, it's definitely uh, an exciting game between the two. Uh, St. Clair giving it it all against this squad, making them work for their uh, their plays. One thing to note is that uh, the TF is actually not going for a Ludens or a Proto Belly. He's going for a Night Harvester. So he's looking for that straight burst onto whoever he gets on. Yeah, and unless, I feel like, unless he really finds Lassie, I don't know if he's going to be able to really burst anybody, per se. But still, a good chunk nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. Game's less bloody than the first one. But this is going to uh -oh. be a gank bot lane. It's going to be active for sitting behind. It's a TP coming in from uh, top lane. It's going to be Lassie getting really low. He's going to go down. Cooper 3 may have been caught out now. It's going to turn into a winning fight for the side of uh, Toronto Mission Saga. Uh, cool. Okay, party time bot lane. Everybody's invited except the bird, as we do see like Frez continuing to push up that mid lane, but Brian just going to teleport back. And okay, that's going to be yet another, unless he can turn this. Almost, but not quite. So close. Evelyn almost getting caught out there with that uh, 
Iron Spike, I believe it's called. Almost catching a Evelyn on the one for one, but it's going to be four for zero, I believe, on the side of University of Trauma Saga. Yeah, I don't think anybody went down. It really stunk for the side of St. Clair as soon as that, like the teleport started coming in, as soon as uh, TF came in. Um, Lassie was basically already down to half HP, if not less. And I don't even think the Camille was necessarily aiming for Lassie, but it did actually catch him crossing through while he was uh, stealthed from the ultimate and just did not work in the favor. Lassie couldn't get any damage off, which granted, Bane has a little bit of damage, but it's not necessarily the high damage that we're used to seeing in the late game, so to speak. But Saints just didn't get anything off that, which is really rough to see. Yeah, and big, big roam down from the TF there, catching Lazi, but they're actually going to look to catch the Leona here on a ward, burning that Sonar Flare. Oh, small victories. But they're burning a crucial ultimate, actually, right as Drake spawns, so... Actifor is trying to make his way down there. And they know where the Eflin is, off these pings are showing in the red jungle. I mean, this is where uh, Uchirano Mississauga is going to find their strengths, being able to get those huge jumps before like the Saints really situate themselves. If they take really any poke or lose any abilities prior to the engagement happening, it feels like they're basically going to get popped. But yeah. like something like a dragon, if Saints are already there, that might not be where they want to try and go, as we do see them going over to come play with Shelly, the Rift Herald, up here in... The top side. Nobody from Saints are going to contest that. Just take the dragon. Number two of the game so far for the St. Clair Saints. One kill, two dragons, and trying to maybe push this bot lane a little bit. And this is actually really in a really bad spot for uh, Kubra having his tower down to such a low. It looks like the Evelyn's going right behind him to drop that Herald and possibly dive him. This may be really bad for Kubra. I think you might have called that to a T. Here they come in the top lane. Active Force in the jungle as well, nearly getting picked out. And Cooper going to try and run away, block as much as possible, but there's just too much damage. He's going to get popped nice and quick. Goodbye to your tower, and goodbye to your life. We got a tower back, but can we get a kill in return? We'll have to see. No mana TF TPing down here with his ulti. He can't do anything. Yeah. It's a proto -bell. And this is going to be Lazi catching a kill here, but he's going to go down in return. TF. Not be, he's just gold carding. It's going to actually turn into a two for one. The one gold card. I feel like that gold card, did it even come out? I feel like it maybe even uh, like timed out in his hand, but like. Yeah. Oh, well, hello, Frizz. actually catch Froze forever here. Uh, overextending for this minion wave. It's going to be Frez catching another kill, making a two for two. All right, small victories, yeah. and that's a good kill. Yeah, the extra greed from Forever, wanting that minion wave, but Prez with a great roam down there, catching him out. The bird does not fly fast, but when it does arrive, it is deadly. Prez getting two kills to start off this game. Already two more than I think he had all of in the last game, unless he got one near the end. But a very much stronger start. His CS numbers are fantastic. Has two kills under his belt. He will be a much bigger factor in this game as we move forward. Yes, Red Eclipse is really giving Kubra a hard time up in the top lane, but at least Kubra is, is if he can just hop in, stun somebody critical, and the team fight continues from from there, then okay. In, in a sense, you kind of did your job. You did what you needed to do. But... We'll have to see, because he's not going to be really packing much of a punch himself. But teamed yeah. up, he'll be okay. Definitely a uh, brute in the jungle, or in the mid lane now with those two kills. Um, critically, the Kane now getting his uh, form, so... Big, big fights are going to be coming out now. Both, both everyone, not both, everyone finishing their items. Uh, two proto belts in the jungle and mid lane. They're actually looking possibly top lane, but they're going to call it off. Probably wise. It felt like they were rather really forcing that, but wise to back off in this situation. But we do see Lousy and Mansko going back towards that blue area. They could get turned on if they're not careful. 
Right. No real objectives on the map at the moment. Everybody is going to farm up a little bit. Saints down just under three or over 3,000 gold in this situation, and give or take. But a much closer game. Now, a proto belt, Twisted Fate. Is this something we see normally? <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely for that extra range. You get that pro belt in, and then most likely he's going to build a rapid fire next if he's feeling greedy. And he gets that pro belt extra range, and he could gold card that uh, Bane. This may be Cooper actually getting caught out into TF. Although it's going to be a blue card TF. That's not what you want to see. <laughs> the blue That's card. Gonna be, <laughs> That's going to be Cooper walking away. Unfortunate for Brian. But... Uh, you wipe the brow if you're Kubra in this situation, but what about Frez? Uh, he's got to be careful. There's still three members near this midsection. He's going to opt the back out, uh, since he doesn't know where everybody's at, so probably a wise call. <laughs> but the blue card coming in from Brian. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's an unfortunate thing. You hate to see it, really. But it's going to be everyone resetting Ray's Drake spawning in the next 30 seconds. Forever going to try and get his back in as quickly as he can. And Miantsuo in the active force clearing out all the wards. University of Toronto Mississauga has been on actually getting this vision. They've been completely destroying St. Clair almost in this vision game. But one big thing to note actually, Marcel just uses Smite. It won't be up on Drake Spawn. So this, they may have, unless they draw it out, this is going to be like a 30 second timer on Smite. Oh, that could be nasty. Lazzy's going to get dove on right away, trying his best to get away from Red Eclipse. But Lazzy has absolutely nowhere to go. Going to get sliced away. Marcel Leslie taking him down. Might be the one for one. Actually, I don't know. It's getting a little bit messy. A nice grouped up situation here. Ooh. Might be perfect for Frez to do some damage. An explosion act is not going to be long for this world. That's going to be a double kill for Kubra. Get himself back in the game. Active Force is still going, transversing these walls like it's nobody's business. And actually, a three for one on the side yeah, of St. Clair. It's huge for St. Clair. They're going to get that Dragon Soul Plane. And Lazi just getting completely targeted by the team. But the Braum ulti keeping everyone off. And he's lived for so long and drew out the fight that Pantheon and, uh, Act and the Kane just simply dumps her them. This is actually forever getting oh. way too greedy for that. Oh. Oh, he wanted sure it so bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he still had egg either way, so it was just gonna be a really bad thing. That's gonna be Frez picking up his third kill of the game. Feeling huge on this uh, Nivea. A night and day difference compared to game number one, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. This. Well, Kuber is not having a fun game. He's just getting three man ganked. That's going to be him going down. Brian barely making it out from tower range there. That's the awkward thing, though, about these dives is you don't necessarily have a tank unless there is a, a Leona with you. But Saints might be turning this, given the fact that uh, Marcel Esne showed himself bot. They're turning this towards the Baron. Active Force is here. The only one right now is Forever and Explosion Axe. There is the True Shot Barrage. Is... That's going to uh, be a double TP. Hitting Vayne is crucial. If they're actually... Leona getting on Vayne, stunning him up. That's going to be Baron going over to Active Force and trading the Leona kill. It's a one for one so far, and I think St. Clair is just going to disengage here. And the wall coming out there from Frez is going to stop this push dead unless Marcel Lesney could somehow catch somebody on the side of Saint slipping. But they're going to stay grouped up in this situation. Thankfully so. But granted, the fact that that was a... Uh, a 4v5 at best for St. Clair, and they were able to squeak a Baron out on three of their members, at least. That was uh, some quick thinking. Yeah, that's that's actually a, a huge play for St. Clair to spot the Evelyn when he double bot lane and just take Baron for it. Act Force hitting that smite on even while under CC from the Camille, and they just trade kills, jungler for support. And it's going to be St. Clair coming out on top with a Baron. It's kind of the second time we've seen this, where yes, this composition can absolutely dive onto Lazzy and just make his life a living hell. Or they can dive in onto Kubra and just like really make it very difficult for him. But it's twice now that when they've dove, they've either taken too much damage trying to get to their target of choice, 
or they've put themselves out of position to the point where another objective is on the board. And they have to really be careful moving forward here, because now this is basically a dead even game. And like sure they have kill power, but are they being strategically sound? I don't think so in this situation as we move forward towards the mid to late game. Yes. Yeah, went from having a 3k lead in the favor of University of Tramasaga, but St. Clair just tying it dead even with Drake spawning most likely next minute 30. It's just going to be lanes being shoved out and St. Clair just gaining gold. And oddly enough, in this scenario, I'm actually more scared of Frez compared to Lazzy right now, at least. Frez, with three kills, three assists, no deaths, has some items in his hands, can keep pushing lanes aside, negating any sort of aggression, which in turn will let Lazzy just farm up and eventually be an absolute demon slayer. So, like, Saints are actually, like, strategically, as long as they don't get themselves caught out time and time again, are not in a bad spot, in my opinion. Yeah, they're in a they're pretty much in the driver's seat of this game. They have three dragons to their name. This may be the Evelyn catching the vein oh, oh so lucky for Marcel. Hitting protobelt in ulti, but nothing coming from it. Lazy getting the back. That was actually and, so close. <laughs> yeah, it's really crucial now because the vein has complete her rage blade, so this next fight at Dragon in a minute, it's definitely going to decide where this game's going. And yeah, these five on fives, unlike the last game where it felt like anytime Saints took a 5v5, I felt like they were going to lose. I feel like in this situation now, anytime there's a proper 5v5 where nobody gets picked or anything prior to the fight actually happening, Saints, in theory, should be able to take this in a landslide, considering now they have multiple threats. They have some tanky bodies as well to try and negate some of this damage. They should be able to blow up the team of pretty much entirety squishies on the side of U Toronto. Yeah, and this is right before the drag spawning. Pantheon does actually pick up a Sterix gauge, so they're getting pretty tanky, but they're actually looking to catch out oh, no. here on the side. He's going to pop the stopwatch and act of course inside the Brian. They're going to take the TF. They're going to actually just force everyone off. In the this is a free dragon soul, actually, for the side of St. Clair. Bless the egg of the phoenix, or whatever you want to call uh, Articuno over there for, uh, for Frez's Anivia. Sure, you get jumped on, you went down. I thought he was going to be in a world of trouble, but if anything, now they could turn this aggra into the aggression that they were looking for. Brian going down, they take a dragon. Soul is in their pocket, and now... This is going to hurt for the side of uh, Utrano Mississauga. One tower down. Saints getting their first tower lead of the series. Much better than the 1 to 10 that we saw in the last game. Yeah, um, definitely in, in favor of Frez. That last fight, he didn't even burn the egg. He only burned Stopwatch. So they still have to burn through his second life. And they actually have cut off this Evelyn. But unfortunate. Oh, oh it was over the wall. And she gets away with the Flash Proto Belt. Crucial with uh, Evelyn having no escape. I mean, that Evelyn ult still has some decent damage to it. And like when they stacked up, it actually took like a quarter off of everybody. But yeah. <laughs> um, looking like nobody to follow up. Uh, Toronto Miss Saga is looking to find them, but only able to find the crab, and they're going to take that and leave. But Saint Clair definitely in the driver's seat of this game. Not by much, but yes, for the time being, absolutely. And the fact that, well, it's kind of deceiving. Sure, the gold lead isn't but that much. But the fact that Saints already have four dragons, have the soul in hand. And it's something that I always have a hard time completely comprehending. So when we're saying the dragon soul for uh, scrub lords like me or for uh, new people to the, the League of Legends scene, can you explain like what the dragon soul buff necessarily entails in this situation? Yeah, so the biggest thing in League of Legends now since two seasons ago is that they took away uh, infinite drakes and they just made uh, you only can get four on what your team and they give excessive buffs now. So you have the side of St. Clair have picked up the Cloud Soul, so they've gotten that CD. And speaking of St. Clair, Kubra getting caught out again, but. He's just too tanky unless they're going to commit to it, but he's going to trade Brian's life almost. And they're just going to trade Baron again. Once again, 
so unfortunate for the side of Trauma Saga, but that's just going to be Baron going away of St. Clair for free. My At the expense of nothing. <laughs> My heart always skips a beat whenever I see the true shot barrage come across the Baron pit. But not going to be the case this time either. Another Baron for St. Clair. Deja vu basically here on the side of St. Clair. Evelyn shows himself bot. We'll have a bout to the Baron instead. Basically uncontested. Explosion Max almost got Baron to do some of the dirty work for him. But not going to be the case. And everybody this time on the side of St. Clair buffed up, ready to go. Yeah, it's definitely a greedy play by the side of University of Charmus Saga from wanting to dive the Pantheon this late into the game, especially. They, uh, they're they really looking for things, but they're going to actually go for this Camille now, and she's locked in with Kubra, but it, she may get away, and she's going to turn around and die to Lazi. Yeah, now, going to pocket of that vein. now Lazi's kind of scary. What do you see now in the mid lane? Frez nearly getting popped. Frez Goodbye. Is... Okay. Ooh. Did he touch that? No. Oh, no. Not quite, but he's alive. Uh, no. He's still going to hit it up. Actually, maybe forever burning the splash. He actually just may go down here to active force. Have one more slice. Takes care of him. Can he turn on to the Leona as well? Okay. Extended 4-4-0. Four, four, oh, why not? Nicely done there for the St. Clair squad. These team fights, this is exactly kind of what I was talking about earlier in the game where once the the 5 on 5s or the pickless fights happen, Saints just seem to be in fantastic position. Especially since even the Saints in this in this spot are finding some picks themselves and you're not winning a 4v5 with such a squishy squad. Free inhibitor, basically, for St. Clair. Yeah, it's definitely... I, if you're St. Clair right now, you're feeling pretty good about where this game is going. I would I would definitely be worried if you were Trauma Saga in this situation, because there's not much you can do to come back to this. Unless they're going to catch Frez out here. Yeah, they've got Frez here with the teleport in from... Uh, TF. That's oh. gonna go meal. Well, I tell you what, if the Saints just want to, like, back in really stupid positions and just, uh, gift wrap some bounty gold over Delibird style, then by all means, that's one way that, uh, University of Toronto Mississauga can get themselves back into this game, because I know Red Eclipse would absolutely love it. But Lassie now is actually oh. on the chase with Active Force and the rest of the St. Clair squad, and this is looking brutal right now in the favor of St. Clair as three fall, four fall actually, on the side of <laughs> University of Toronto Mississauga. Make that the ace, and yeah, this might be it. Yeah, it's looking like St. Clair wants to end here. The lowest, the quickest they have is 27 seconds, but it looks like University of Toronto uh, Mississauga just, they just fall over there. Yeah, but Saint even... Clair Sorry, even before they get to the towers, Mar Celestine just leaves the game like, hey, okay, we tried something cute, it didn't work, on to game three, but the Saints fight back and get themselves a game three situation. Yeah, and that's, that's huge for St. Clair, coming, pulling back with that, Frez coming out huge with that 5-1-3 and three score line against the TF. And the, the downside of it is that you have a, you take out the Nivea, but you just have a vein in the back line still. So you have no one to tank that damage for you. Yeah, a much better feel good moment here for the entirety of St. Clair. Of course, it's a uh, like I'm sure it's bittersweet in a sense because you know that they were probably just trying this composition because they were up a game. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you didn't fall for it. Is still a huge yeah. win. And now you have the momentum on your side going into game number three. Is there any final thoughts in regards to game two that you have before we do throw it to a very quick break before you get the final game underway? I think uh, St. Clair's are looking pretty strong now after that game. They University of Toronto, Michigan may have been trying something new, but it didn't look like that first game really affected St. Clair at all. They, they used that knowledge they got from the first game and used it to their advantage in the second and just it pushed them into a victory here so it's looking pretty good for st Clair coming to game three definitely could not say better myself and i'm happy that they didn't fall for the 
the squishy speed tank style that they are trying with the picks and whatnot. But we'll have to see what happens for game number three. Of course, I assume that the pick and bands are going to look much different, maybe a little bit closer to what we've seen in game number one. But we'll have to see in just a moment, of course, because we are going to throw this to a very, very quick break as we get ready for game three, get the lobby up and running. We're going to have ourselves an exciting game three finish. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 